Hello and welcome to Vector Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak, and today we are going to continue designing a book cover. In the first part of this tutorial, we already designed the cover, but now we are going to design the spine and the back of the book cover. And then once we are ready with these, we are going to create a 3D mockup using a Photoshop action, which is going to be something like this. For this tutorial, we already used InDesign, Illustrator and Photoshop. In this second part, we are going to mainly use InDesign and at the end, a bit of Photoshop. So let me go back to InDesign and I am going to create a new page. I'm going to create first the back of the book by right clicking on the page I already have and choose Duplicate Spread. Okay, so we have already the back. And to be able to attach these together into one spread, I'm going to right click and choose allow document pages to shuffle. I actually turn this feature off. That means I can drag and attach the second page to the first one like this. And if I drag it a little bit uh, more, so I select it and I drag it like this, then the spine will be in the middle. So I have already the two pages next to each other and I can delete this one, all the images and everything from the one on the left. And I can create a third page, which will be my spine. I select one of these pages, right click and choose duplicate page. I can again delete everything from it. And I am going to use the page tool. This is the page tool and set the width to something much smaller, which is going to be the sp size of the spine. Let's just try 90 millimeters. That's maybe a little bit too big. I'm going to use maybe 60 millimeters will be enough. And then I can drag and drop the spine in between the two pages. So now this is the way it looks. If I zoom out a bit, we can see that that's the front and the back and the spine. If I press W, we can also see the bleed and the margin lines. If I think that the spine is still too big, I can still use the page tool, click on that uh, spine part, and I can reduce the size, let's say 40. And uh, I have a warning that because of my margin sizes, I can't do this. And obviously for uh, the spine, I don't need a really big uh, margin. So I can go to layout, and change the margins for that selected page. And I'm going to set them only to five millimeters. I click on OK. And now we can try to set the width to 40 millimeters. And that's a much narrower uh, spine. Maybe now it's a bit too narrow. So no problem. I can just select it and again change the size. 50, I think, will be the best. Now that we are ready with this, we can use this uh, element here and just drag it all the way to the other side and set it all the way here to the edge. If I zoom closer, I can make sure that the stroke uh, goes outside. So I'm going to drag it out a bit like this. And then we can zoom back. If I press Command Alt 0 or Control Alt 0 on PC, I can see all my pages together. So the whole spread if I press W, we can also see uh, the preview mode. And uh, now we can start moving things around. I'm going to select the gift of breakup text and Alt click and drag, and then press R to rotate and just rotate around, hold down Shift to keep it um, 90 degrees. And then I move it here in the middle. Okay, so that looks good already. I maybe move it a little bit to the right. Okay, um, I just going to make this a little bit smaller. Command Shift, hold down these two together. And now it's in place. And then I'm going to select the author's name, Alt click and drag to uh, duplicate and then turn around and make it smaller. Command, uh, Command Shift, drag and then place it there on the top. Let's make it a little bit even smaller just to make sure it's not too close to the edges. And then I just use the arrows on the keyboard to move it into place. 
Okay, so that looks good so far. What I would like to have is a key here on the spine as well, on the, on the ribbon. So I'm going back to uh, Photoshop, or actually we need bridge. And from the links folder, I am going to drag and drop this uh, PSD file, the key file. But before I do that, I'm actually going to create a duplicate of this file. So I right click, choose duplicate, and I am going to double click on this and uh, create a style on uh, the key. So I double click on it and choose color overlay and set the color overlay to white. I click on OK and save this document. And then I drag and drop this into InDesign. You will see what I wanted to create. What I wanted to achieve is to have a just blank white version of the key. I'm going to turn it around, make it a little bit smaller and paste it or place it here in the middle. If I zoom closer, you can see it's a nice uh, version of the key, but just simply using pure white. Okay, I can zoom back. And now we can focus on the back of the book and uh, we can add text first of all. Um, we can once again use the title of the book. And in this case, I think I will use it here in the middle and I will use everything in orange. So I'm going to use Fotches and select orange for the text, something like this. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, so there's the title of the book. And then we can have more text here in the, on the bottom of the page. I'm going to use the type tool, create a frame. Let's just align this frame to the margins properly. And then I go to type, and choose fill with placeholder text. Okay, so it's already filled up. Let me just zoom a bit closer. It's a little bit too close. So there's my placeholder text. And I don't really want to spend more time on this because we don't have the copy for the back. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Maybe move it a little bit up. And then probably that's all what I want to have on the back at the moment. Of course, you can always add here more about the author or have a little bit more things about the book. You can even have images here on the top. Uh, I just don't want to spend more time on the back of the cover. What I would like to see is how it looks all together. So I'm going to press Shift W to see everything all together. Now, what I can tell immediately is that the text on the back is just too small to read. Okay, so I'm going to select it and I'm going to make it bigger, the font itself. So let me just delete some parts. I will delete these here. Okay, select it and command shift full stop to make it bigger, the text. And now press shift W to see it again. Now that's much better, we can already read this. But what I would like to also do is make sure there's no hyphenation here on the back. So I'm going to select the text frame and press Command Alt Shift H. Okay, there will be no hyphenation. And we can also justify the text, Command Shift J. Okay, and maybe I am going to use less paragraphs just to make it a little bit nicer. Something like that. And we can also get rid of these paragraphs here at the end. By the way, this placeholder text doesn't mean anything. It's like a dummy text, just to make it look like we have a copy for the book. Even if we don't have it, we can already prepare it without having the copy. That's a very uh, neat feature in InDesign. Okay, so we have everything in place and maybe we can use a drop cap here in the first paragraph. To add the drop cap, all I need to do is selecting the paragraph formatting controls from the control bar. And from here, all I need to set is how many lines do I want to use for the drop cap. I will probably use three lines and only one character to be used for drop cap. And then just one more thing, instead of using black as the color, um, because we have a white background, it doesn't have to be so um, high contrast, the text. I'm going to set it to something more gray so I go to my swatches and I select black, but I make sure that the type formatting is selected. 
and then I create create a new swatch double click on this and reduce the black density to something like 60% or maybe that's a little bit too light so I just double click on it again and increase it back to 80% let's see that yeah that's much better now if I press shift W we can see again the text and it's everything ready now to uh, save this out obviously here on the top it's a bit empty but as I said we can place something there maybe we can put the key there once again and um, then we just fill that place in with the key well, let me just turn this around okay I just type in zero for the angle and I make it smaller like that there's a warning sign on this image uh, which I can check in the links uh, folder and if I double click on it then it will update the file now what happened is that I actually uh, it replaces the image with the white version so I'm going to resolve that issue I'm going to drag and drop uh, this version here and then again this version onto the other file okay so that was just a quick fix for a broken link and I am going to again press shift W just to check my design okay now we can save this as JPEG uh, all these parts of my design and then put it into Photoshop and run the action to create the 3d mockup so I'm going to press escape and go to first of all file save to save my InDesign document and then go to file and choose save as uh, sorry actually file export and choose JPEG and I'm going to call it book cover save and I would like to save all pages so not spreads I want the uh, pages saved separately and then I click on OK now if we go to a bridge in bridge we are going to see these pages saved separately so the cover and uh, I'm in the front of the cover the spine and the back you can select all this together press command B to see them side by side here in uh, bridge and then what we need to do is uh, to go to Photoshop and use an action now this action is from a collection called cover action pro and I just briefly show you the website this is the website and uh, you can buy this uh, set of actions for Photoshop and they are really cool you can do lots of different things with it what I'm going to use is a hard book cover and this is the hbook 008 action so this is what we are going to use uh, let me just run the first part of this action it creates a template for us and we can just place uh, our design here so I drag and drop uh, the front and I paste it in there I just stretch it a little bit so uh, it fills in the space make sure that I put this on top of all the other layers and by the way all the other layers can be deleted quickly like that and then I am going to uh, put the spine as well here so I'm just going to drag and paste it there let me just check it's almost a perfect match uh, but just to make sure it fits well I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and maybe move it up a bit until it meets uh, the other line okay so that's all in place and uh, for this side on the right I can create a new layer and just fill that part in I make a selection and fill that part in with the same red as I used on the ribbon okay so that's all prepared and now we can go back to the actions panel select second step and render this um, book cover and Photoshop will do everything automatically and we will get the final 3D rendering which is a nice uh, mock-up and we can always change the background because we used a lot of white on our cover it would be better to have a darker background so I selected the background layer press command U for hue saturation and just reduce the lightness of the background something like that maybe we can even add the gradient by double clicking on the background layer choose gradient overlay set it to reverse and reduce the opacity so we will have a nice gradient in the background and then thanks to the action we have everything on separate layers so I can always reduce the opacity of the uh, 
um, reflection and also the shadow of the book if I decide to. And we can save this version and send it to our client. It's always good to send a 3D mockup as well of your design because that uh, makes it easier to imagine how this book will look like when it becomes a final uh, printed product. Of course, we will also need to save a PDF file from InDesign and send that to the uh, client or send it to the printer. But if you use CMYK images and all high resolution and you make sure you use a bleed and you set up the size of your document well, then you should already be uh, in a good situation to just simply save a PDF, which is going to print well. Of course, there's much more to printing. And uh, in this tutorial, I just wanted to concentrate on the design part and also how to create this 3D mockup uh, for your client. I hope you enjoyed this second part of uh, the tutorial and I hope you will join me next time as well. Thanks a lot for your attention.